Good morning and good afternoon or good evening if you're joining us from the UK or Europe. Uh, I am Tad Bradley, the North American sales representative for Maya Trails in Guatemala. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning or this afternoon or this evening uh, for a deep dive webinar on Antigua and Guatemala City. I am going to be joined shortly uh, by Jimmy Rogers, the founder and director of Maya Trails. You can see our two photos there in the left-hand corner. Uh, I spent the start of my tourism career in Guatemala. That's a picture of, of me at uh, Pacaya Volcano, one of the volcanoes outside of Antigua. And, uh, and Jimmy is uh, born and raised in Guatemala. And as I mentioned, is the director and owner of Maya Trails. So Jimmy, can you hear us down there in Guatemala City? Yep, loud and clear. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, great to have you all here. And, 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 and I really want you guys to all enjoy and really suck in what we got in of this enjoyful time of Guatemala and Antigua, guys. Thanks, Jimmy. We're going to uh, just some quick housekeeping. If, um, if you have questions, you can enter those into either the chat panel or the Q&A panel in your Zoom control panel. We'll uh, answer and field all those questions at the end of the webinar. And uh, this is being recorded, so if you have to jump away or you would like to share this with any of your colleagues, um, you will um, receive a link to the webinar in its entirety after uh, we're done presenting later this afternoon. And I think we're just gonna jump in. As I mentioned, we're gonna be doing a series of these deep dives into Guatemalan um, tourism. And we're gonna start with the gateway cities of Guatemala City and Antigua today. So we're shooting for about uh, 30 minutes and then a Q&A at the end. As I mentioned, I started my tourism career in Guatemala, so it holds a very special place in my heart. It's one of those, those soul places that I, that I feel in the world. And whenever I return to Guatemala, it feels like home. Uh, and it's also one of the most beautiful places uh, in the world, without question. You can see on your screen the, the few photos of Antigua. As you can, as you can see, it's, there's volcanoes. There's three of them around Antigua, and all three are, are visible on a clear day, just towering over this beautiful colonial city of Antigua. We're going to just orient ourselves quickly, ge geographically, for those of you that aren't aware. Um, hopefully most of you are, but this is Central America here. As you can see, not very far at all from the southern United States here in Texas, um, just bordering Mexico, Belize, Honduras, and El Salvador is Guatemala. Zooming in further, we're going to talk today, as I mentioned, just about Guatemala City and Antigua here in the highlands of Guatemala. So these are the highlands area, 33 volcanoes throughout the highlands region, uh, incredible Mayan, Mayan culture, live Mayan culture, the modern Maya. Uh, in, inhabit uh, over 50% of the population today in Guatemala is indigenous Maya. And then we'll get to this in later webinars, but up in the north is the ancient, what was the home of the ancient Maya up here near Tikal and Washaktun and Yaksha, the ruins of the, of the once great civilization from 1500 years ago. But today we will focus just on Guatemala City and Antigua. And some good news recently related to Guatemala, uh, appeared on both the Fodor's 2020 Go list, as well as the National Geographic Where to Visit in 2020. And uh, I think the Fodor's in particular really illustrates what is um, oftentimes the challenge of selling Guatemala, which is it's, it's a misunderstood country. And unfortunately, recently in particular, is being mischaracterized um, in, the, in the press. And I thought the quote was really important. This is the headline of the Fodor's uh, article on Guatemala. It's one of the most beautiful countries in the Western Hemisphere. And it's often one of the most misunderstood. I'll send a link to that article because it's a very important article for you to read and to, to utilize in your sales. And then of course, National Geographic, and this is without question, Guatemala is the place to dive into Mayan culture, both then and now. And as I mentioned today, we're going to chat about the highlands of Guatemala, in particular Antigua, Guatemala City, where the modern Maya live. And then in future webinars, we'll dive into the ancient Maya up in the northern Paten region of the country. Getting to Guatemala, super easy. As I referred to earlier, not very far at all from Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, LA, all have direct flights. Even New York has direct flights into Guatemala City. And the longest of those is a four hour, four and a half hour flight 
from uh, LA or a five hour flight from New York. So from Houston or Miami, you're talking about two and a half to three hours to Guatemala City. So very easy to get to from those Southern gateways um, into Guatemala City and then to jump off from there into your tour around the beautiful country of Guatemala. So uh, Jimmy introduced himself earlier, just a little bit of a more detail on who Maya Trails is. They are like all of the Cusini collection partners. They're a boutique tour operator. They are Guatemala based. It's Jimmy's coming to us from Guatemala City. They're Guatemalan owned and operated. Uh, they really are specialists in tailor-made itineraries, uh, getting out and discovering unique things uh, under the surface of, of what your typical tours would find and incorporating these into both FIT itineraries as well as groups, whether that's white label groups um, or groups of their own. And they operate from the mid-level up into the, the super luxury category in, in Guatemala. They've got a great team, uh, all based in Guatemala City. They do also operate in Belize, which we'll probably cover in a future webinar. And, and Belize and Guatemala complement each other very well and are easy to combine into a multi-country itinerary. One of the differentiators uh, for Maya Trails is their vehicle fleet. And this is due to the fact that they also operate or own the license, uh, the franchise for Hertz in Guatemala. Hence, uh, they are constantly getting new vehicles as, as car rental companies uh, do. So you can be assured of brand new vehicles that are in top shape. Uh, and that goes from the Toyota Sprinter type vans for larger groups down to BMWs and Mercedes for your, for your high-end luxury travelers. And little known fact as well, Guatemala has actually got the set, second, per cap, second highest per capita ownership of helicopters in the Americas after Brazil. So it's very easy on, a, on the luxury end of the spectrum to connect Guatemala City and Antigua with other parts of the highlands as well as up to the Paten where the ruins are. So no shortage of helicopters to cut down on some of the longer drives. Another big differentiator and a focus for Maya Trails is hiring exceptional local guides, whether that's a tour leader that will stay with your guests for the entire trip um, or hop on guides in each destination. Always look to uh, empower local communities and local people to hire hop on guides. For example, in the upper left, Lourdes brought on one of our incredible guides on Lake Atitlan. She's a Sutsuhil Maya woman. Or on the upper right, Francisco Estrada Belli in the center there. He's an archeologist, quite famous archeologist now. He can be brought on as a, as a hop-on guide for archeological tours up in the Paten. But they really are focused on finding the best of the best of the guides. And currently um, about half of their guides are also women. So looking to empower local women as well um, to give them opportunities to, to share their beautiful country, whether it's Luisa here in the lower left, who is one of our best adventure guides, or Dolores in the upper upper left, who is our guide um, on Lake Atitlan. You'll always be in good hands with incredible guides with Maya Trails. And then just covering some of the, you know, the elephant in the room, sadly, um, Guatemala, as I mentioned earlier in that photos article, they hit the nail on the head. It is often a misunderstood country and mischaracterized, but it is incredibly safe. The civil war in Guatemala ended, I think, over 23 years ago now. This is a bit of an old slide. They're currently a level two travel advisory, which is the same as most of Western Europe, same as Brazil, Belize, France, India, the Netherlands, even Antarctica is a level two travel advisory. So despite what you may have heard in the press or, or characterizations of Guatemala from the past, it is a very safe country um, and one that you can confidently send your travelers to. Obviously, just like anywhere else in the world, um, parts of your city that you're listening to this from, there are um, things you need to do, take precautions and, and, uh, and make sure that you're, um, that you're safe and, and most importantly to travel with a, repute, a reputable tour operator like Maya Trails naturally. So getting, getting past that, let's get into the good stuff which is to take a little virtual tour here of Antigua. Uh, Antigua is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's the former colonial capital of Spain. As I mentioned, it's surrounded by three beautiful volcanoes. It's a culinary hotspot, both from coffee, it's one of the coffee capitals of the world, uh, chocolate, and much more avocados we'll talk about. And there's a whole host of active adventures uh, in the area as, as evidenced by 
fact that uh, it's surrounded by volcanoes, there's all kinds of great hiking in, the, in this highlands area, mountain biking, zip lining, other things of that sort. So getting to Antigua, you fly into Guatemala City, which we'll cover a little bit later. As I mentioned, short flight from Miami, two and a half hours, three hours from Houston. And from Guatemala City, it's only about a 45 minute to an hour drive to Antigua. Very easy to, uh, to leave the airport and head straight to Antigua and, uh, and jump right into your Guatemalan adventures. And we always recommend to start your time in Antigua with a walking tour. It's a very walkable city. It's a small town. This is Monte La Cruz above Antigua. Here is the Agua Volcano. And you can see this is all of Antigua. So it's a small town and easy to walk around, but getting a good walking tour, an orientation walking tour of the city, learning about the colonial history. There are tons of these um, beautiful ruins of the colonial past, whether it be convents or mansions from the uh, co colonial era, cathedrals. And it's just a very atmospheric place. Central Park here on the left, walking through, seeing local people, enjoying the afternoon, uh, listening to music, and taking in the colors of the buildings that are brightly painted colors um, all throughout Antigua. And it's one of those places after a little orientation walk, you can safely go and wander on your own throughout the the town and uh, and find yourself getting lost and it's going to be okay. It's a small town, it's very safe, and you'll oftentimes discover a lot of really uh, amazing things um, just as you wander about about the town. As I mentioned, it's just really full of atmosphere, uh, both during the day. This is the this is the uh, municipal building in Antigua, right on the Central Park. Really atmospheric and beautiful during the day, uh, and it really does come to life with incredible atmosphere at night as well. Great for families. This is my daughter, her first international trip. When she was a year and a half. So like, again, um, this just evidence that Guatemala is a very safe place. I was happily, happy to take my year and a half year old daughter on her first trip abroad to Guatemala. Here's Jimmy and his family um, exploring Antigua. One of our other partners from Ecuador, Dasi Carvalho and his family, if you know Tropic Ecuador, Dasi and his family taking a, a Guatemala vacation, taking a break from Ecuador. Um, and it's just a wonderful place to, uh, to bring uh, families, not only for the culture, but uh, it's an easy place to explore. There's so much to do and see to keep kids engaged and excited. And, um, and Antigua is, is really uh, the best place to kick off uh, a tour to orient yourself in, in Guatemala with your family. As I mentioned, Guatemala is a great culinary hotspot and coffee is obviously uh, one of its its biggest exports. I think it's the number three supplier of coffee beans to Starbucks. Um, but it does produce some of the world's best coffee. And there's a whole host of coffee experiences one can have in Antigua. But one of the, the experiences that Maya Trails really tries to promote, and I think is one of the best, is to go uh, uh, learn about coffee from a local coffee producer, a small farmer. And this is with an organization called De La Gente, which is a nonprofit based outside of Antigua where you get to go to the fields, to the coffee plantation of a small farmer, into the fields with that farmer. If it's coffee season, harvest season, you can see here the ripe, red ripe coffee cherries, you get to go out into the, into the coffee plantation and pick the, the ripe coffee cherries and really have a, a, a uh, plant to table experience. So you're you know, seed to bar, you're gonna be picking the, the coffee cherries, you're gonna learn about how to strip off the, the cherry using this contraption here made out of a bicycle, uh, washing the green coffee beans and then roasting them over the fire in a Mayan family's home. This is the home of the, the actual coffee farmer. And then you get to sip freshly made coffee that you have, uh, have just experienced from, uh, from the plant to the, to the cup. Guatemala is also uh, the birthplace of chocolates. The Mayans called it the cacao plant, the fruit of the gods. And there's some great coffee and or chocolate making experiences and to learn more about the cacao bean. Of course, for kids, this is a, a must do at the Choco Museum, uh, the Chaco Museum in Antigua. So op opportunities there for, for uh, lots of sugar highs. And a little known fact as well is the, the Hass avocado is uh, actually began its life in, in, in Guatemala. Many people think it's a California avocado, but it actually was, was uh, was started in um, or began to be cultivated in Guatemala many years ago. And there's a great tour where you can learn a lot more about the avocado 
uh, its many uses, its benefits. And there's uh, Jimmy's son, Michael, um, learning about avocados with an avocado farmer. You go out into the fields again and, uh, and learn about the cultivation of the, of the fruit and then back into the kitchen and get to prepare avocado smoothies and guacamole and, and other um, great uh, culinary delights with, with avocado. Community cooking experience, again, this is with De La Gente. For those that want to, again, go in and experience what life is really like with a local, when you're a local uh, Mayan family living in Antigua. You get to go into their home and, uh, and prepare a meal with the family. And that's everything from, <laughs> you can see, keep feathering the chicken if you're so inclined, to uh, more benign things like making tortillas, uh, cut chopping vegetables, and then getting to prepare it, typically, it's chicken pepian, which is a national dish of Guatemala. And then you get to sit down with the family and enjoy that, um, the fruits of your labors in their home again. Really immersive cultural experience and learning about the Guatemalan culture and the Mayan culture through food. There's really no better way to, to experience and immerse oneself in, in culture than to go in via the stomach. Other types of um, culinary experiences, cooking class in Antigua itself, you get to go into the market. Uh, learn about uh, how locals shop for their fruits and vegetables and meats and and then go back to a 300 year old heritage home a colonial era home and have a cooking class um, from what you've purchased at the market so uh, again stepping back in time into the colonial past and and learning about the culture of guatemala um, through food you want a little bit more of a of a local experience and go on a street food experience where you get to eat some of the delights of uh, the Guatemalans go out and eat when they're um, walking around town from Chuquitos, which is a Guatemalan tamale, chiles rellenos, and then chucos, which is my favorite, a Guatemalan hot dogs. These are done um, in the style of the Guatemalan street food, but in a, in a, in a restaurant where sanitary um, uh, sanitation is really considered and, and taken seriously. So you get to, um, to, to sample what the Guatemalans eat in the street, but in, in, a, in a safe and sanitary environment. Of course, you got to pair any street food experience with a gallo, which is the national beer of, of Guatemala. And there's not, there's obviously a lot of food experiences in Antigua. We've talked about a bunch of them so far, but there's other ways to support and to learn about local people um, doing artisan crafts and uh, classes learning how to uh, do some traditional woodworking here in the lower right, um, making a wee peel, which is a, a, making a bag out of a wee peel. The wee peel is the, the traditional uh, blouse worn by Mayan women. And this, uh, again, with De La Gente, they can take some of those uh, traditional wee peels and weave them into a, a bag that you can take home, a purse to use. Um, it's uh, another way to contribute to local artisans and small farmers. Every single penny of all of these programs and, and community-based tourism activities with, it, with De La Gente go toward the artisan or the small farmer. The peanut butter workshop is one that we did with my family when I was there with my daughter. And uh, unless, of course, you have a peanut allergy, this is great fun. This is actually um, hosted by a family that also has coffee on the lower slopes of their land where peanuts uh, plants grow better than coffee. They actually planted peanuts. They saw an opportunity as well. Lots of gringos in Antigua who miss peanut butter. And so these, um, these farmers planted peanuts and started to, uh, to create peanut butter that they sold at local shops. And you can go and, and learn about how to make peanut butter from, from the actual um, shelling of the peanuts here to uh, roasting it and then grinding it and then eating it um, like a Mayan crepe. Unfortunately, I covered up the picture here of the, of the what is the ultimate um, uh, product there, but it's, it's a Mayan um, tortilla with peanut butter, honey, and banana on top, kind of like a Mayan crepe, and it was amazing. But you know, for my daughter, it was more about experiencing the, the home of the Mayan family, meeting the ab abuela, the grandmother of the family, going and seeing the chickens and the rabbits, she had a great time and was well entertained and well loved and taken care of by the family. And after you've had all of these experiences, getting your hands um, dirty, going out into um, cooking or into the farms, into the coffee fields or shelling peanuts, you can also uh, have an amazing 
culinary experience uh, with the dining scene in Antigua. Some of the best restaurants in Guatemala are in Antigua and Guatemala City. No shortage of amazing restaurants uh, and fantastic chefs and also atmosphere. As you can see, just about everywhere that you are having a um, meal in Antigua, you're gonna either have a view of the surrounding volcanoes or you're gonna be in some beautiful colonial heritage home or former convent or former cathedral and it's just dripping with with amazing atmosphere and then having an, an incredible uh, a meal as well. Maya Trails also is able to set up gala dinners or destination weddings in again some of these old colonial buildings like this one here. Uh, just can talk about amazing atmosphere for a special dinner or for a destination wedding. So this is something that we can also arrange in Antigua and elsewhere in Guatemala but in Antigua it really does have uh, that special feel because of the colonial heritage of the town. So coming to Guatemala, you can also spend a lot of time um, looking at or experiencing great shopping. And we try to, to get guests uh, integrated into not only shopping uh, for themselves, but also shopping for a purpose. And this is uh, an incredible social enterprise business that's based in Antigua called Uluxabal, which was which is uh, a fashion brand that connects local artisans into international markets. And it takes Mayan designs and Mayan textiles and integrates them into clothing and footwear that then is sold uh, internationally. They, you're able to go to the store in Antigua and actually meet the artisans who are weaving, producing these beautiful, colorful styles that then, um, that then are put into, and, and then actually act, you know, putting them into the, the clothing or into the footwear. So it's a way to not only support local people, local artisans, and support uh, this incredible uh, tradition of, of Mayan handicrafts and weaving, um, but also to bring home a pair of really unique and, uh, and very beautiful either footwear or, or, or clothes as well. So this is one shopping experience that we highly recommend for people that are going to be in Antigua and, and looking to, to spend a little money on something unique and special that they can take home. Traveling like a local, this is one of my favorites because in my opinion, if you really want to understand Guatemalan culture, you have to ride a chicken bus. <laughs> These chicken buses are of course American school buses that have been driven down to, to Guatemala and repainted and, and uh, souped up with new engines and new clutches and, um, and made into really works of art. And uh, the reality is you're not gonna ride a chicken bus for two or three hours from Antigua to Lake Atitlan or even from Guatemala City to Antigua. But we do like to take guests on about a 30 minute ride, take them outside of the town in Antigua and let them hop on a, on a chicken bus with a guide where you can experience what the locals live every single day when they're commuting to work, going to visit friends, um, just riding around town. And uh, it's a, it really is an immersive cultural experience inside of a chicken bus. You can also go to where chicken buses are uh, fabricated and they're stripped down from their American school bus past and turned into these works of art. So if you want to, if you're interested in experiencing that, that is um, easily done yeah, just outside of Antigua as well. All right, we've talked a lot about food, a little bit about culture, but Antigua is also full of adventure, whether that's zip lining in the forests around Antigua, do some great mountain biking, everything from single track in the mountains to very easy, gentle mountain biking um, in the valley around Antigua. And then of course, volcanoes. As I mentioned, Guatemala, or Antigua is surrounded by three volcanoes. There's Fuego and Acatenango. Acatenango here, these gentlemen are on the, near the summit of Acatenango overlooking Fuego. That's a little bit of a harder hike. That's you know, a full day's hike. You can actually camp up on the, below the summit of Acatenango. So that's a really, for, uh, for pretty keen hikers. But for those that just wanna go experience uh, an active volcano and, and uh, not work that hard to get to a beautiful view of it. We have Maya, Volcano Maya here, which is about an hour and a half drive from Antigua, easy to reach, and then it's about an hour and a half uh, hike up to this Mirador viewpoint. And if you don't wanna walk, there are uh, horses that can take you up there as well. But as you can see with this family group here, there's a Jimmy and Jossie with their, their families, young kids, easy for them to walk um, or to hop on the horse to get up to this Mirador. And then you have this incredible view overlooking the 33 volcanoes of Guatemala, of course, Papaya right behind you. Uh, and then we will set up a picnic lunch 
to enjoy that view. For those that want to have a, a sunset view as well, we can you can do it in the late afternoon and watch the sunset over the uh, the volcanic spine of Guatemala, which is a pretty spectacular way to to end a day as well. Again, little known fact for those that are into fishing, Guatemala is actually the sailfish capital of the world. So from Antigua or Guatemala City, it's about an hour, hour and a half drive to the Pacific coast where you um, would hop on a boat and, and head out to do sail fishing. It's all catch and release. And uh, as you can see, you're out on these boats in the Pacific Ocean looking back at Agua Volcano. That's where Antigua is, just on the other side of that volcano. So if you have guests that are, that are keen fishermen, uh, this is something to do as a day trip or there are some lodges on the coast where you can um, spend a few days to, uh, to really you know, just, uh, yourself in the experience. And we'll run through a few hotels. What, what makes Antigua so special is that you have all of these beautiful old colonial buildings, convents, cathedrals, mansions, and many of them have been turned into these incredible, incredibly atmospheric boutique hotels. The Good Hotel is actually a new one, it's a little bit more modern, um, but it has a social, it's a social enterprise as well, where profits from the hotel go to support several uh, nonprofits in, in Antigua. Uh, it's got a bit of a Scandinavian feel to it, but just like most of the Guatemalan um, buildings in Antigua, they have that Spanish colonial uh, feel and the, the courtyard in the center. Maison de Maria, and these were starting with more of our mid-level hotels and then heading up to the high end. Maison de Maria, great location right near the Central Park of Antigua. Uh, it's uh, incredible value and, uh, and just really, again, full of, of atmosphere from those. El Santo, this is a great example of what almost all the hotels in Antigua have, and that's views of the surrounding volcanoes where you can have your breakfast and look out over Agua Volcano or Fuego Volcano, Central Courtyard, just, you know, very comfortable. Pensativo, another mid-level to, to higher-end property, full of, uh, of Guatemalan and Mayan charm as well. Maison de Maria, uh, sorry, uh, Panza Verde has been around for years and is again a, a, a former a colonial mansion, just dripping with incredible atmosphere. You know, Guatemala is, uh, Guatemala City's at about 2,500 feet, or sorry, about um, 4,500 feet, and Antigua is almost about the same, a little bit higher, 4,700 feet. So it does get cold in the evenings, uh, especially from around November through to March, which is the winter season, the dry season. So you do want to have those fireplaces in your room, and Panza Verde has, uh, has that incredibly char charming fireplaces to warm you up during the, those cold winter nights. Palacio de Doña Leonor has another great colonial mm -hmm. era with a colonial um, courtyard in the center. Casa Santo Domingo has, has been a go-to for, for years and years. It's a former convent and uh, it's a quite a large property but never feels that big because of the, each of the areas is, of the hotel are really almost a hotel within itself. It also has an amazing museum of Mayan archaeology right on site. Big pools. It's a great place for families. San Rafael, just the steps from the famous arch in Antigua, again, full of uh, atmosphere. This is, has, has more design elements, a little bit more modern, um, but uh, always hearkening back to that Mayan era as well as the colonial era. Really nice support. El Convento is one of our go-to on the high end. It is, well, as the name indicates, a former convent. It was actually completely rebuilt in the traditional style and is, it just did an amazing job making it feel like it's about 300 years old, but it actually is relatively new. And um, each of the, the doors of each room is a hand-carved wooden door with a different saint. It's, uh, it's a spectacular place. It also has, like Posada del Angel, there you have your breakfast overlooking Fuego Volcano. Posada del Angel is uh, one of our go-tos for honeymooners as a smaller property. The thing is, all of these properties that we've gone through, not one of them is any bigger. Well, for Posada, um, also 100 rooms. The rest of them are less than 25 rooms. These small boutique properties and price points at the most, you're looking at uh, you know $600 per room per night during peak season. So an incredible value as well, given the quality of the properties as well as the incredible uh, atmosphere that you um, 
that your guests will feel while staying there. This is the new one, Las Cruces Boutique Hotel, one of the nicest now luxury hotels. It is uh, paired um, or owned by the same folks that own Las Lagunas up in the Paten region near Tikal. So it's a nice combination with Las Lagunas if you have guests headed up uh, to that part of the country and are in the on the luxury end of the spectrum. And then glamping. There's a couple options for glamping. This is oftentimes one night, uh, but something different in the hills outside of Antigua. More of your traditional glamping with large tents, full beds, and uh, chef prepared meals. You can hike up to this viewpoint or get driven up there and then hike down the next morning if you want to go downhill, <laughs> only downhill. And the views overlooking the Antigua Valley and the volcanoes are spectacular. And then this is a really unique one where they've taken old Airstream trailers and turned them into, uh, into a glamping experience as well. Obviously a little bit pretty small, but um, for you know, couples, even families that we can do, there are several that are right, that have two right next to each other. So you can have kids in one Airstream and mom and dad in another. They all have their own private deck with a hot tub as well as a fire pit. And they also have these beautiful views out over the Antigua Valley. So something different you know, tonight uh, to mix up the experience or for guests that want to have that nature experience just outside of the town of Antigua. It's a great opportunity. Great opportunity. All right, Jimmy, anything I missed in Antigua? That I should have uh, should have covered. No, you pretty much covered it all. All right, we're gonna we're, we're gonna good. backtrack to where you are, back to Guatemala City, yep. and uh, and just finish things up here. Guatemala City is often overlooked um, because it has a there's a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Antigua, 45 minutes away. So most guests, again, short on time, especially North Americans, will opt to just fly into Guatemala City and then head straight to Antigua. 45 minutes away in the highlands. But Guatemala City is the gateway to all of Guatemala, whether that's the Paten up here in the north or the highlands. You have to fly into Guatemala City. And from there, Guatemala is, is your oyster. And that can be done whether you're driving out to Antigua, an hour, 45 minutes. Lake Atitlan is about a three hour drive from Guatemala City. Or if you're helicoptering, you can helicopter from Guatemala City to Lake Atitlan in about 25 minutes. Uh, and Guatemala City is also your gateway to the Paten, so there are scheduled flights from the city up to Flores, which is where the airport is, and then road transfers on to Tikal. It is a large capital city, about three million people, but it has some of the top museums in the region, not, I mean, not just in, this, in the country, but certainly in the region, if not in the Americas. Certainly for Mayan archaeology, it's definitely the top museums. And, uh, like Antigua, some excellent restaurants with top chefs, and, uh, and a great place for shopping as well. As I mentioned, museums is a big reason for spending time in Guatemala City. It is uh, the home of the best museums for Mayan archaeology, including the National Museum of Archaeology and, um, Ethnol and Ethnology. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where you'll find some of the antiquities that have been discovered in the Mayan world up in the Paten area displayed. You also have the Museum of Popol Vuh, which is the Mayan Bible, essentially, and the actual Popol Vuh is, is displayed in this museum. For those that are into uh, more into the textile of the Mayan, the in, we have the, this incredible insider access through Maya trails to the Ixchel Museum, which is the world's foremost museum on Mayan uh, weaving traditions and uh, indigenous dress and textile. Uh, Nikki is actually on the board of the Ixchel Museum, so that gives us special exclusive access to the vault of the museum with a curator. So for guests of yours that are keen to learn and really immerse themselves in the traditions of Guatemala's indigenous people, this museum is a must visit and we can do it with a curator into the vault. So the, the collection that's not uh, publicly displayed, your guests would have access to. And then downtown Guatemala City, again, despite what you may have heard in the media uh, and your preconceived notions, it's actually a wonderful place to spend an afternoon walking around. There's the Presidential Palace, Avenida Sexta, Sixth Avenue. This is the Pan American Hotel, which was made famous in the 1920s with Pan American Airlines or Pan Am Airlines that used to fly to Guatemala City. It used to fly a lot of places, uh, but this hotel was, uh, named after Pan Am and it's along this beautiful Sixth Avenue that has lots of these 
Art Deco buildings from the 1920s and 30s. And then an amazing local market as well that's um, just full of color and uh, interesting um, local delights. And then little hidden gems um, of small little pubs um, like El Portolito here, picture of me and this is Adriana from Maya Trails. And Portolito was a famous hangout of Che Guevara. It also has uh, some of um, the unique different types of beers that the Gallo uh, beer uh, offers and you can get them mixed in this, in this little uh, pub. So all these little hidden gems from a culinary aspect as well as an archeological aspect and a historical aspect are on offer in Guatemala City that you know, 95% of the people, to be honest, overlook them. But for guests of yours that have some extra time in Guatemala City, there is a lot to do and it's very safe. We can make it a really fun afternoon. <laughs> and wrapping up here, Zacapa rum. For those of you that are um, into spirits, as you know, Zacapa rum is one of the best rums in Central America, if not in the world from Guatemala, and there's a Zacapa rum tasting room, both in Antigua as well as Guatemala City. But for guests of yours that are keen to taste some of um, the really unique and, and uh, special varietals of Zacapa, some of the older varietals, they, uh, they have that on offer here at the Zacapa rum tasting rooms in Guatemala City. And then finally, the hotels. There's a, a variety of really nice hotels La Immaculada is really the only, currently the only smaller boutique hotel and they have about 11 rooms. Got this nice little courtyard with trees and, and um, it feels like a little bit of a forest inside this very busy city of 3 million people, a nice oasis. And then you have your international hotel brands that are all um, well located. All of them are very close to the airport, you know, within 20 minutes of the airport maximum, depending on traffic, but that's generally about right. Uh, the Hilton, the Western Camino Real on the higher end of the spectrum, the Real uh, in Intercontinental as well. And then brand new properties like the Hyatt Centric, which has just opened in the last uh, 12 months. Also in the Zona Viva, which is the, the air area near the, near the airport um, and full of great restaurants and nightlife and shopping and then access to these muse museums that uh, we discussed earlier. So don't discount Guatemala City. It does have a lot to offer. It is safe. Obviously there's parts of it you don't wanna visit just like any city and parts of Seattle, Oakland, San Francisco, New York that you don't wanna visit, Chicago. Guatemala City is no different than that, but it does offer a lot to your guests if they have an extra day or even an afternoon to burn before a flight. There are some wonderful things that we can do with them in, in Guatemala City as well. So please don't, uh, please do give it a chance. And that is the, the quick whistle stop tour through Antigua and Guatemala City. I hope that was uh, interesting, useful, enlightening. I do wanna wrap up here by just reading something from the Fodor's Go List. And this was the, the write-up that they, that they um, put in for Guatemala. And I think this is important and that's why I wanna highlight it by reading it out loud and I'll send you a link to it. But uh, here's what they say. Let's point out the obvious. In the last year, Guatemala has gotten some seriously bad and seriously unwarranted press. Parentheses, see all the idiotic claims of caravans. Earlier this year, we published an article specifically pleading with readers to not only not be afraid of this country, but advising them as to how easy it is to fall in love with it. And you know what happened? We received dozens and dozens of emails from readers who likewise absolutely adore Guatemala. And how could you not? It is a truly remarkable country, a varied land that brings to life every child's imagination of mysterious faraway wonders. Think wild jungles, ancient ruins, volcanic lakes, and then there are the cities. The namesake capital, Guatemala City, a vibrant metropolis of museums and culture. Antigua, a colorful town of crumbling cathedrals and hidden courtyards. I'll leave it there. There's more I could go on and on, uh, but I will send you the, the link to this. But I think that just encapsulates what we're trying to do here today and, and through the series of our deep dive webinars is to debunk some of the, the misnomers and the misperceptions about Guatemala and hopefully um, empower you and encourage you to be able to, to sell this amazing destination to your guests. All right, we're gonna open it up for questions. I think there were a few that came in while I was um, going on and on. 
Uh, do you have a vehicle fleet in Belize or do you subcontract? Jimmy, I'll throw that over to you. Yes, uh, I pretty much answered them there already, but when vehicles that we use in Belize, we subcontract them. And then the other question was similar that the guides and other services, and if we have our own operation in Belize, yes, we have our own operation in Belize. There's some other services that we do have to subcontract, let's say the, the scuba diving and, and some sort of those type of equipment. And as far as your guides in, in Guatemala, um, all of them are, are freelancers, but you've got a core group that you utilize on a regular basis, correct? Correct, correct. And I can, I can say with experience that the guides that Maya Trails employees are, are really, truly fantastic um, and are specialists in, in, uh, in each of their, their regions or in some cases as, as generalists. Um, can you send a list of tours from each area in Guatemala? Yes, Marcia, we will send a link to the uh, Maya Trails signature tours. And these are all sample itineraries. We've got your must-see Guatemala, which is your classic Guatemala. Um, itinerary and then things like the archaeologist or the adventurer, the honeymooner, um, lots of uh, different ways to experience Guatemala and these are some of the ways that Maya Trails has come up with. Um, now these are just samples, they can be booked as is or they're starting points for, um, for customization. So we'll send a link out to all of those. Yes, and we will send lots of photos as well. Just looking for a few more questions here. Thank you, Peggy. Great to hear. All right, I think that may be all the questions we have today. If you have further questions, you can of course email Jimmy or myself or your consultant Maya Trails and they will get back to you. I will be sending out a link to the recording of this webinar as well as to the signature tours and to the articles and photos as well as National Geographic. And again, thanks so much for taking some time out to, to dive into Guatemala City and Antigua. The next uh, deep dive will be on Gua um, uh, Lake Atitlan and Chichicastenango, further into the highlands. So stay tuned for more news on when that will be. And um, again, have a very happy holiday. Thank you again so much for spending some time with us today. Jimmy, thanks to you and your team. and. Uh, We'll chat with you soon. Thank you very much, everyone, and happy holidays. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.